artists along the Golden Road experience the Northwest through its art and the artists who live here. Northwest artists are passionate about art, and Golden Road Arts extends their passion through education. We're on an arts mission, introducing children to art. The Golden Road Arts nonprofit and Northwest artists help us provide our instruction free for children, encouraging and supporting the arts and arts education now and for the future. Hi, I'm Lindsay Holcomb with Golden Road Arts, and today we get to learn a little bit more about a fabulous contemporary artist from Japan named Yayoi Kusama. Now, of course, this is just a drawing of Yayoi, but when you see pictures of her, she's instantly recognizable with bright red hair, and she's always wearing polka dots, which we'll talk a little bit more in depth about today, about why polka dots were so important to her. She's often referred to as the princess of polka dots, in fact. So talking a little bit about Yayoi and her beginning, um, her early years of her life, she was born in Matsumoto, Japan in 1929. And she was born to a family who was pretty well-to-do. They worked in um, with seed collection and nurseries in a rural area of Japan. And from a young child, her parents did not encourage her to be an artist. Um, during that time in Japan, girls were often expected to grow up and become wives and learn how to run a household, and that was all that they were supposed to be interested in. So her parents actually made it very hard for her to learn art. Um, there's stories she's told that they would rip up pictures that she had drawn and take away her art supplies. But she was a really um, creative child and she found whatever was around her that she could possibly use to make art with. Sometimes that would be mud. Sometimes that would be using grains of rice. Sometimes that would just be using your standard writing pencil or pens that you would find in your house, nothing special in terms of art supplies. So her creativity couldn't be stopped just by her parents not wanting her to be an artist. Um, something also about Yayoi from a young age is she began to start seeing things that were not actually physically around her. Um, now you can call this hallucinations, but what it looked like to Yayoi is Perhaps you've looked at a bright light at some point, and if you've looked at that light and you look away, you're still seeing that light wherever your eyes are tracking. Sometimes that can happen if you're looking at a really dark object, like say these dots on this cover. If you stared at those for about three minutes or so and then looked up to the wall, you might see polka dots. And this is what young Yayoi saw when she was about 10 years old. She described them as seeing fields of polka dots wherever she looked. And when she saw this, she kind of felt lost within these polka dots, maybe like how we would feel if we're looking at the night sky and seeing millions of stars. That's what Yayoi felt when she was looking at her environment around her. So in 1941, this was a very important year for Japan. Japan entered World War II with the United States, against the United States, and it was a very um, tumultuous time to live in Japan during that time, especially as a young child. Yayoi had to contribute to the war effort by helping to sew fabric parachutes in a factory from the age of 12. And she would do this all day long, sewing and sewing um, in a dark environment. And it was a very difficult time for her. But as we'll talk about a little bit later, she took this difficult time and translated it into her work when she was um, a more established artist. During that time, in Japan, she happened to be going into a bookstore one day and looking through some old books that were from the States. And she happened to find an art book by a very famous artist, one of the most famous artists of the time from America, named Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe is very famous for painting bright, vibrant flowers and a really creative um, 
impressionistic way, which is very loose and dreamy, and it left a huge impression on Yayoi and the type of art that she might want to pursue in the future. When she studied art in Japan as a young adult, she was focused mostly on the Japanese style called Nihonga, which is a really controlled style of painting. There's lots of rules. There's only, there's very particular ways that you can paint a plant or an animal or a landscape or a person. And it takes years and years to master that type, that type of artwork. And Yayoi, in seeing this new type of art, this what we called abstract impressionism, was very inspired and it kind of sparked something within her where she knew that she needed to go to the States to continue her art career. So Yayoi was inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe's work and she wrote her a letter. And she explained in her letter that uh, she was wanting to pursue art. She wanted to know how could she become an artist? How would that be possible for her in the United States? And in a huge act of generosity, Georgia O'Keeffe actually wrote her back and helped connect her with several of the people that she worked with in New York City. So following that, Yayoi was able to move to the States and pursue her first solo exhibit as a professional artist. So we're gonna talk a little bit about her work um, that she did in these early years in New York City where we start to see a lot of her polka dots that she's so famous for. Um, what Yayoi called her polka dots or her repeating patterns were um, infinity nets. Infinity meaning going on forever. And the nets was, an, um, she was describing that there was no focal point to her paintings. There was no one subject that you're looking at. It's all a repeating pattern, whether it's dots, squares, triangles, different shapes. And she would create this way to kind of get lost and relax her mind. So if you're drawing dots for two, three hours, you're gonna be very relaxed. You're gonna kind of lose your thoughts a little bit. And this is what Yayoi liked doing with her artwork. So I wanted to show a little bit of examples of how she crafted her infinity nets. And these are things that you can practice at home too, and come up with your own patterns and your own techniques. Um, I think with exploring, you're gonna have a lot of fun. So, if you can grab just a pencil, a pen, and a sheet of paper, we're gonna walk through several different ways to work on a, an infinity net, as Yayoi would. And the first is going to be a square. Now, the nice thing about doing a square in the style of Yayoi Kusama is you don't have to be precise. It doesn't have to be a straight, perfect line you can see mine has a little bump up there. It's crossing there. I might say, mm, that's not a very good square, but it's a great square because it's gonna do what we need for today. So let's just draw another one next to it. And as you could see, we could keep doing this for a long time. Some of them make the lines just a little bit different. You can experiment, experiment with doing longer lines, short lines, slanted lines, and just always connecting them at the sides. This one I might go down a little bit more. Now you could continue this for a really long time in any direction. And if you can imagine doing it in a very tiny way, it would look really interesting if the entire page was covered in these squares. So these are kind of what she would do in her studio, relaxing all day in front of a big canvas and doing these tiny squares. I'm doing kind of bigger ones today, but you can do any size that you want. Another thing that we can do with this square shape is what she calls um, the growing square infinity net. And what that is, is just like we've been making our squares here, we're going to add a triangle in every once in a while. And by adding this triangle in, it's turning our shape even more in another direction. So I'm gonna draw a square off of that side. And like I said, square, I know we learn in school that they're all the same side, same length on each side, but we're just doing four sides in any length that we want for this activity. 
I'm going to add another triangle here. And you can just keep going and experimenting with your growing square infinity net. Okay? Doesn't have to be perfect. There is no wrong way to do it. Just keep connecting those lines. So like I said, this is our square infinity net or our growing square infinity net with our triangles. We can also do a curvy infinity net, which she enjoyed doing. And to start doing that, we're gonna just make kind of a squiggly triangle. I like to do kind of the squiggle on the top. You do another next to it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep going around, kind of looks like that parachute that you play with at a park or a class or like the time that Yayoi was making them in a factory. So we have an entire shape now, but we're gonna continue it in another direction. So let's pick one of our wavy triangles and draw one off the side. Now this is my new center. Okay, we can keep going like this for infinity, really. All right, see, now we have two connected shapes and we could do another. So that is a wavy triangle infinity net or a curvy infinity net. There, you can do it with straight triangles of varying shapes. And it's gonna be much like this where we connected two different shapes Focus a little bit more on straighter lines. Okay, I'm gonna pick a corner of one of these to start my new shape. And like the other shapes, you can just continue doing this in any direction. Perhaps you could connect it with different shapes that you've learned here, or one of your own. You can make up your own design. I think the last one I'm going to show you with Yayoi's infinity nets is a star shape. This one can be a little tricky to learn, but it's really fun to experiment with. I started with drawing three straight lines there. I'm going to make a point, kind of making each of these lines into a diamond. Some of them are going to be wider, some of them are going to be smaller, and that's okay. Okay, so it's kind of a star shape. And now just like this triangle shape down here, I'm gonna pick one of these points to start my new shape. It becomes a new star shape. And you can keep doing this as long as you'd like. Experiment with coloring them in in different ways, create repeating patterns, create different color combinations. You could do anything you want here. There's no right or wrong way to do it, okay? So if you can imagine, Yayoi would make a painting that was just about the size of this big wall behind me and larger. So filling rooms almost with these repeating patterns. And this is something she was really famous for during her work, her early work in New York City in the late 1950s. Um, again, we called these infinity nets, which she later moved into doing infinity rooms, which is covering every single object in the room and the room itself in some sort of repeating pattern. And she would often incorporate mirrors into her work to make it seem as if the the shapes would continue forever. So you can see that. Perhaps you can't see that. We'll play with it. Have fun with mirrors and look at what kind of shapes you can get repeating and imagine what that would look like in such a large space over and over again. Now Yayoi also considered herself a part of her art and so when you see pictures of her you'll often see her entire outfit, her hair, her, accessory, her accessories matching her infinity room that she's created. Um, it's where the artist becomes part of the art and she's very recognizable for that. So moving a little bit later in her life, she's been doing these infinity rooms, infinity net artworks in New York City. 
and she had a very hard time with lots of artists copying her ideas. Now, in art, lots of us art take inspiration from other artists, and we say, I've been inspired by a type of artist, or um, I've studied this certain type of artist, and that's okay, that's how we all learn, and everybody is inspired by somebody, but it's always important to say, I got this idea, or I got this inspiration from a specific name, so so-and-so. So in this case, Yayoi Kusama. Unfortunately, during that time, a lot of these people did not recognize her name or give her recognition for the type of work she was doing. So she had a very hard time with working with other artists during this time of her life where she would put together a large show and work and then see something very similar by a friend even months later um, and probably getting a little bit more recognition or acclaim than her show did. So that was a hard period in her life where she decided to create a little bit more in secret. Um, maybe you know this feeling where you don't want to share your ideas that you're really excited about with somebody in case they might copy it. That's kind of what she was feeling like at that time. And so in 19, about in 1960s, she transitions a lot of her work to moving off of a page or a canvas and her infinity rooms to putting her patterns on people on animals, on trees, um, on clothing, on everyday objects like bathtubs, really anything that she could put these patterns on, she was putting patterns on. And so it kind of shows like her early years where she didn't have a lot of things to create her artwork out of. She just used her mind to use anything that was around her. She did that later in life as she was more of a professional artist as well. So in, you might be wondering why I have this pumpkin here. And Yayoi is very recognizable for her infinity pumpkins where she does her repeating dots and patterns on a pumpkin. She's written that she likes pumpkins because they're simple, they're sweet, and they're fairly unassuming and she kind of sees herself as a pumpkin. So we'll see pumpkins in her work a lot. Um, and probably most famous is her yellow pumpkin that she did on a pier in Naoshima, Japan in the 90s. And we'll show you a picture of that. If you'd like to try your own hand at making your own Yayoi Kusama pumpkin, it's very easy to do it. I know they're not gonna turn out exactly like she would do it, but they always look really fun no matter how you try. So I invite you to now find uh, either a real blank pumpkin, you could use a gourd, you could use a squash of any kind. Um, these are plastic pumpkins that I found at the store because it's almost Halloween time. And all you really need is a permanent marker. If you want to make it very easy, you could use different colors. Or you could use acrylic paint and a brush, something, some type of paint that won't wash off easily. If we used watercolor or something like that, it's going to run a lot. So we want to use something that will really stick to these shapes of the pumpkin. Okay. And so how we do these repeating shapes is you'll notice that on the pumpkin it comes in these little sections. It kind of gives us natural lines and sections on the, on the, um, on the pumpkin itself. And so you're going to use those as guidelines to start a new pattern over. Here I've done something simple where I've just done different larger dots intermixed with some smaller dots in different shapings. So you'll see this took me about 10 minutes to do, but we can work on one together on this bigger one back here. Okay. Now, if I were to cover this completely in dots, that would take me quite a while but it would sure be a fun project. So let's go ahead and do this. So Yayoi would pick one pattern to do in one specific section of the pumpkin or her pumpkin drawing, okay? Um, attached to this lesson, you'll find a printout where you can print out the sheet of paper of a pumpkin and practice your hand at doing different patterns and dots and have some fun with it maybe before you use an actual pumpkin. You can do either way. Both are really fun. So I'm just going to take a section and just begin because why not? Sometimes we 
don't want to think about it too much. I just know that I'm going to work on this one section right here. I've made this side spot, so I'm going to try to do that side spot again. Now I've chosen to do it a little bit in a random pattern, so either going that way. You don't have to do that. You could do straight lines. You could do all the same size. You could do small dots and large dots mixed together. A lot of her dots are connected in her actual artwork, which we'll show, we'll show some pictures of. Okay, so if I were to continue with this, I'm going to continue it all the way down this way. Now maybe we want to take something that we learned with her infinity nets and do a pattern on another section. So how about we try to do triangles? Do a triangle infinity net. There's my first triangle. I'm gonna just keep going around. Now every section could be the same, or you can make them all different. You could take a pen after this and color in the different colors. Now in this case, because the section is little, my shape isn't going to be completely done, and that's okay. I'm just going to keep drawing connected triangles. Not Yayoi's infinity nets. You can imagine this is going to look pretty neat when it's completely done. It's a very unique Halloween decoration if you wanted to do something creative for that. Okay. I'm just going to keep going on those triangles. I hope that by learning a little bit more about Yayoi Kusama today, that you take away that you can create art with anything that is around you. You don't need fancy materials. You don't need fancy brushes or pens. Just start making something. And in her case, polka dots brought her a lot of joy and relaxation. And so what shapes bring you relaxation? Or what shapes do you draw that make it feel fun? You might not feel the same way about polka dots, but what could that be for you when you're doing your artwork? That's something fun to think about. I hope you enjoyed today's lessons about Yayoi Kusama and you enjoy making your own pumpkin. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Lindsay Holcomb. I'm with Golden Road Arts. Have a wonderful rest of your day.